Welcome, viewers. My name is Carl Markman, the Director of National Sales at Remit Wholesale. We have a very distinguished uh, group of individuals today, loan officers from around the country, to talk about um, best practices in becoming a successful loan officer. Before we get started, I'd like to thank National Mortgage Professional Magazine for hosting today's uh, webinar, live, actually. Um, and before we get started, I'd like, I'd like to introduce our very distinguished panel, Chris Stritz, uh, over here from Capital Mortgage Services out of California. We have Amber Bzumek from Ascension Mortgage Brokers out of Salt Lake City, Utah, and of course, Kit Crown out of Manchester, Connecticut uh, with Right Track Mortgage. Um, you know, Kit, you and I had a conversation the other day, um, and we talk about best practices. I got into the business back all the way back in 1993, and when I got into the business, I was very analytical. I didn't have my, my written plan in front of me, and a lot of us out there um, don't have that written plan, and I decided when I got in the business to kind of draw a little pie chart, and when I did that, I included realtors and broke and, and financial planners and, and builders and accountants, friends, of course, and I, I didn't initially apply percentages about the time I took to actually reach out to those, those, uh, those referral sources. But over time, that's what I did. And during a purchase uh, market, I, I, I obviously spent more time with realtors versus you know, another, you know, maybe an attorney or so forth. Um, but that's how I got started. And I felt that if I hit every single piece of that pie all of the time, I'd always be successful. It didn't make a difference if it was a purchase environment or a refinance environment. And you and I had a conversation about how you got started, and it was very interesting. So I'd love for you to share with the viewers today how you got started into this sure. business. Sure. So it was serendipity, Carl. I um, uh, had sold my last business, uh, was casting about for something to do. A colleague of mine on the town council said, why don't you try the mortgage business? I sneered at him and said, "That's, must, that's those guys are worse than used car salesmen. <laughs> Um, but I didn't have something else to go to, so I, I pursued it and found out I was 25 years late to my calling. Um, now, I didn't have a plan like you do um, or you did. I um, went at it by, uh, uh, you know, first, not being a secret. I sent out letters to, you know, my top 100 people. Uh, I uh, purchased leads and I worked them relentlessly. Um, and most important, I built relationships with the people that um, I was um, doing mortgages for. And I, and I taught those people to not keep me a secret and to refer their friends, family, and coworkers. Chris, uh, you got into the business uh, in 2007, correct? Correct. And um, we had a conversation the other day, um, and your story resonated to me because um, you didn't start with a book of business. Um, you started from you know a different background. So I'd love for you to share your story with the viewers today. Right. Absolutely. I uh, started in real estate uh, when I was 19 years old and my license in 1987. Uh, sold real estate until uh, the early 90s when the market had crashed. Ended up taking a, a real job as a truck driver for 18 years. Short and, stint. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, I the entire time I'd always wanted to come back to the real estate industry at some point. So I entered into the, the mortgage industry when I was, uh, no, I'm sorry, in November of 2007. That's a tough so, thing. So yeah, I, everything had changed in the business. I, a lot of people advised me not to make that move, um, but I was armed with a uh, little bit of severance from the company I worked for and my 401k and uh, promptly ran through all of that until I was absolutely broke. But the one thing I did have, I was absolutely committed to being successful in the business. And there were times that was an unbelievable struggle uh, where I, uh, I rolled change. I took in my recyclables. Um, you even you know, mentioned that you were taking an application at someone's house and you knew your gas tank, right? The light was on right. and you didn't have enough. I didn't, didn't know if I had enough gas to get home. Yeah. I mean, there were, there were times that were that tough. And, uh, but the, the one thing I said, I, I was absolutely insistent that I was going to be successful. I was willing to do whatever it took to do that. And, and working with a with a mentor and learning the guidelines, learning the products and, and just working, trying to work harder than everybody else and build uh, realtor referrals uh, and, and referral partners, uh, you know, one at a time. That was really the key to uh, turning things around. Uh, and it's been amazing in the last few years for me. Well, and I, I will tell you that I can I can tell why you're so successful because you're so sincere. And um, it's funny because after the fact, you're proud of yourself. You're proud of your success. You're not showing off. And, you, you, and I, I kind of take your phone, right, and I show right. everyone right. that we've met over the last day or so that uh, you and I had met um, because you showed me your, your pool and your house. And your, it's pride, right, that right. shines through. And you work really hard. Right. You yeah. work really hard to get from where you were 
to this point, right. and it took a lot of effort and struggle. Um, it didn't come easy. Oh, not at all. I mean, it's meant working 16 or 18 hours a day, uh, seven days a week, and, and being there to answer the phone um, when clients call or, uh, or realtor or other referral partners call. But you didn't rest. I mean, you still do that now, even but how many to years this later. Day, absolutely, to this day. Yeah, if you don't answer the phone, somebody else will. I think the viewers here today are going to see a common theme among these three individuals, um, that it took a lot of hard work, right? This wasn't easy. It wasn't working eight-hour days to get to where you are today. Um, I'd, I'd next to like to introduce Amber, uh, and Amber has a, a very uh, different story. Um, so why don't you share how you got into the business with everyone? Today? Well, um, I had aspirations of being a processor but I didn't have any experience. And so I took a very entry level position as a bank teller. And then I moved on to working at a credit um, reporting company, doing supplements and like just slowly, incrementally um, taking different positions and taking it to my fullest and then moving on to something else. And eventually um, I started my own contract processing company in 2003. Um, and I had been doing that until I opened my brokerage. So my background is just different. I'm a little bit more technical, more hands-on, but yep, and that's how a, I got started. And you were a mom at the time that it, you yep. actually... Well, and that was one of the reasons. Is, um, it really facilitated me being able to stay home with my kids, raising a family, not without sacrifice. Because, I mean, really, truly, your 12 to 16 hour day is very normal. Okay, good. But at least then you could be, you know have a, a little bit of flexibility when you start work or end work. So. I, I, I think we, we all take for granted, especially the people watching today, uh, about the time that it took um, and the knowledge that all of you have gained, not just from sales, but learning the guidelines. I think that's kind of a basis for the success here. And, and Chris, you had brought up the fact that your mentor, that when you got into the business, told you that that was probably one of the most important things to start yourself off. So, you know, how did that help you and how does it help you today? Right. It, what really helped me uh, the most in doing that was to, to actually be the expert, to become the professional. And you, you can either be a salesperson or you can be a mortgage professional. And, and that's really what he taught me to be, uh, be consistent in my follow-up, uh, to know lending guidelines, to... Uh, uh, but it, it, it's, it's very easy to say, I'm going to learn the guidelines, right? right? I'm going to become right. a professional. And, um, and back, you know, 10 years ago, anyone can get into this business, right? And today, this is really, truly is a profession. Not everyone can do this job. And, you know, Amber, you know, being a processor first, mm -hmm. um, you know, how important is it for, to make sure that that package is presented in a way that the underwriter is ultimately have to, has it's, to say yes? It's absolutely paramount because, there, well, first off, there's a lot of, competition in the industry but turn times especially if you're working in a refi market I mean your turn times are getting exponentially longer the cleaner the package the quicker it goes the better experience your client has and you're selling a service you're selling a stress uh, hopefully <laughs> if you're good <laughs> that you're selling um, a stress free experience. They don't get to see the sweat, right? And the, and the hard no. work that you're putting behind the scenes. They have the no scenes, idea what's right? going on back there. <laughs> you know, Amber makes a really great point, you know, about from the customer side of what we do. Um, we're trying to make this stress-free. I uh, wrote a piece on my website about, you know, the, I think we forget that uh, if you know who uh, Abraham Maslow is, you know, the hierarchy of needs. What, what's interesting is, you know, we, we strive to put food on our plates clothing on our backs, and roofs over our heads. And I think we forget that it's primal. We're reaching into people's DNA. That mortgage isn't just a mortgage. It's not a business transaction. It's their house. Well, it's an, oftentimes their most um, expensive investment. Right. Right. It's everything. Right. It really is. So, um, and, and this can go to, to any one of you because uh, we have a lot of viewers here today, um, some that are very successful, as successful as you are, um, and they might be anywhere across the country just like you, but um, if a friend of yours or a struggling uh, loan officer with, that's within your office or that works for you, Amber, um, what would you suggest to them to get out of that rut? or to get started into this business? What is, you know, if it's one step or three steps, what would you suggest what kind of conversation would take place? I think um, as far as the rut goes, really important to not be focused on the monetary thing. You know, we all have our obligations. We always have to meet our mark, 
But if you get stuck in that perpetual kind of fear of meeting it, that that's where you're going wrong. Be passionate about what you do. Really, really love it and do the best you can do. And I think energetically that will gravitate a, a better outcome. It seems simple, doesn't it? But it, it's not necessarily inherent. <laughs> well, it's, it's really easy to get stuck in the, the spiral down of, of fear. Yeah, sometimes you need someone to kind of lift you up. Right. Yeah. right. Kit, Kit, what would you say to, to maybe a, a coworker or, or a friend that, that's well, struggling? Well, I, you know, first I think it would be, you know, model a mentor. You know, one of the uh, most successful financial advisors I know, when he came out of, uni- of, of college, he went to work for a financial advisory firm, and he, he said to his boss, who were the top five producers in this, in this office? And he said, I'm not going to let me get in the way of being successful. And he modeled their behavior. So that's number one. I, I tell them process loans because probably one of the things that's holding you back is you're not putting together, you don't understand the process, you don't understand what it takes to make a loan work. Um, you, Carl, you and I spoke you know, beforehand and, and you said, you know, I can give someone uh, knowledge, I can give them tools, I can't give them passion. Right. So you know, the, I say to my clients, I can't want this more than you do. That's what the loan officer, the struggling loan officer has to come to. They have to come to that moment where they say, I want this. Or getting out of their own way, like you said. Right. Absolutely. It's funny because each of you have a different business model. Um, Some of us do more purchases. Some of us do more refinances. And in this environment, it's a strong purchase market and a strong refinance market. Right. Where do you line your debts? Right. And, And sometimes we forget it's going to end at one point, right? So how do you, um, how do you set yourself up to succeed for the long term? Because we're not in this business. This is not a short-term career, right? Right, right. So, so Chris, walk us through what you do today to build that foundation for success. Right. Well, what I've done is I've built some great uh, relationships with real estate agents. And I've also uh, diversified as far as knowing loan products, uh, things that will help you when maybe the purchase market slows down. Uh, you can do some refinances in uh, renovation loans, uh, also uh, reverse mortgages, things like that, things that you know I work with with financial planners uh, and just... Yeah, so so the, the realtor piece, I think, is really, really key because that's really the basis. Because you do, it's not all purchases, obviously. You right. do a number of refinances right. as well. Right. Um, do you, you know, you mentioned to me that you're in a networking roundtable right. group with realtors. Right. So has, how has that propelled you to get to the next level? Uh, that, that's been huge. The, the group of realtors that I work with uh, uh, is excellent. I work with about 25 different agents, and probably six to eight of them use me consistently, but all of them know me. They know my level of knowledge of the business. This way, if they do see a pre-approval letter from me, um, that might be the edge. If there's multiple offers, they know I know what I'm talking about. So it's been, that's been great. Uh, and, and Kit, uh, you have a very uh, unique way of doing business too. By I got I call it by going through the back door. Sure. Walk us sure. through kind of your relationships and, and your networking as well. So they, I mean, I am a member, uh, a, uh, you know, a Kool Aid drinking member of BNI <laughs> Business Networking International. It's a great organization. That struggling loan officer, in fact, every loan officer should become a member of BNI. It's a fabulous organization. It teaches you that givers gain, which is one of the big, I think, core tenets that we all share. Um, but the, um, you know, my, I grow my business by, uh, A, teaching my clients um, to refer me. So I set the bar that I'm going to do certain things in the process. And then at the end, I say, um, you know, if I do all these things, then I expect that you will refer your friends, family, and coworkers to me. Now, my world domination plan hasn't completely panned out, but <laughs> most of my clients do refer business to me. Now, on, um, on the realtor side, I find that realtors are really not receptive to meeting new people. They're more comfortable with the devil they know than the devil they don't. Um, but my strategy has been to call listing agents, because I'm primarily a purchase guy, call listing agents and introduce myself, make sure that they feel comfortable um, asking me any question that's not you know, uh, privileged. Um, and that has built uh, uh, my realtor network enormously. I think it's interesting because, you know, typically a realtor, their back might be up. They might not necessarily want to talk to the loan officer, but in this case, it's a welcome call. Exactly. Right? Because you've exactly. now become right. another resource. Right. They can get information from you from the other side to get their, their transaction closed. Right. 
Yeah, that's interesting. And and Amber, you and I were talking, and obviously you do you do purchases as well, but you're doing a lot of refinancing. We're doing a lot well. of refinancing. Yeah. yeah. So because we work with, with financial planners, and so that that's just kind of the name of the game with those guys, and rates are low, so right. we have the the benefit and opportunity at this time anyway, to really. Um, help our borrowers take advantage of these low rates. Right. And, and, and in t- today's environment is not just about conventional financing, right? Um, we need to know FHA, we need to know VA and USDA. Um, are you utilizing other products like renovation lending uh, and so forth to increase your business and your network? Absolutely. Yeah, these, these, are, these are great products. I think everybody should, you know, uh, take the time to know them. And it just makes you more of a pre- professional, makes you more of a resource. Uh, to your referral partners and to your clients. Right. So, so Kit, where, where do you go to, to find that additional information, that knowledge, that way you can speak intelligently about maybe a 203K or even a Fannie Mae home style type product? Well, uh, you know, first and foremost, I rely on, um, I, I have to say it out loud, you know, my relationship with Renan, um, you know, and, and the product knowledge that my rep um, has, he's invaluable in helping me, you know, solve problems and that's what we're, we're in the problem solving business. So the, you know, sometimes you can't do it this way, but you can do it this way. And getting Steve to help me with that is, is enormous. But there's no substitute for rolling up your sleeves and, and learning the regulations. I think that one of the things that I made a mistake on in, early in my career was trying to memorize the regs. <laughs> and then they changed. And then what do you do, right? And the stuff that gets stuck between your ears. There's so much stuff. There's so much stuff. Yeah. Well, and how many of you, I mean, I'm raising my hand. I have lost business because I had anchored an idea that had changed. Right. And so I said, you can't do that. (laughs) And you could. So (laughs) that hurts. Well, and I just said last week, I have to go back to loan school. And, you know, this is stuff I do every day over and over. And I was baffled when I didn't know something. So, There's just yep. way too information out there. I, I think that, you know, Chris and I talked about finding the resources to find the information that you need because you can't know everything. It's just too much. Okay, good. Uh, I'd like to kind of switch gears a little bit um, because as a wholesale lender out there, a national wholesale lender, we hear all the time, you know, what's your rate? You know, this other company has better rates or you're the best priced out there. You know, Kit, I, I, if, if one of your clients or a realtor comes to you and says, what's your rate? What's your typical response? Sure. So it... <laughs> It, my first response is it depends. Right. <laughs> you know, what are we doing? You know, Same so you know how big questions. is the right? How big is the, the box? And you know, and how are we solving the problem? Um, you know, I see my mission is finding the lowest possible payment um, uh, among the programs that my borrowers qualify for. So with that thinking, you start to filter down, distill down what's possible. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, I think rate doesn't matter. Rate doesn't matter. It's about the ability to close that loan. That's right. So. Especially not being stuck in that paradigm of always selling lowest rate. Because everyone, Spiro, has a different motivation. And I think it depends also on the borrower, too. There are some Absolutely. borrowers or some, you know, a situation that you need to have, not necessarily the maybe, best rate, but one maybe that... Maybe it's a Band-Aid loan. Right. You know, right. or maybe they don't intend to stay. So it doesn't make sense to buy down that rate right. at that time. And that's why I guess with a renovation loan, it almost doesn't make a difference, right? Because it, it becomes a second loan for you, right? You're, right? you're doing the transaction and it's expected you're going to refinance that loan. Absolutely. That's good. So, you know, what would you say to a realtor that came, comes to you and say, you know, Chris, I, I, need, I need a good rate for my customer. What would you suggest? Right. You know, I, and I look at that and I've had plenty of clients that ask me that same question, you know, what is the rate? And they may, may be you know, pretty determined to put 20% down on the property. And maybe that that's not the right choice for them. You know, maybe that depletes every bit of cash that they have and they're left with nothing. Maybe it's something better to be done with maybe 10% down and in, in either a borrower paid or an LPMI uh, that because we really want to balance the payment and the funds that they have. I mean, if you put all your money into the mortgage and you're left cash poor, yeah, it's a pretty stressful life. So I like to put together a situation. So we may have been talking about a, a low rate on 20% down. We may have gone to something with LPMI at a higher rate that they weren't even considering, but it's a much better situation for the client. Yeah, good. That goes back to the expertise, the yeah. professionalism of what we do, yeah. you know, we, because we really are changing people's lives and helping them see, recast their expectations on what the mortgage process is. 
what they can expect right. from professionals. Absolutely. And I think our customers, albeit you know, our networking, our referral customers, or even our actual applicant customers, they can read right through us, don't can't they? Right. I mean, you've got to have confidence in yourself. You've right. got to have the knowledge. Right. Right. That you're well, yeah, that shines through yes. if you know what you're doing. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so let's kind of switch a little bit again, and that is the relationship with between you and your lender. Uh, because, you know, at Remen, we believe it's a, a true partnership. We're kind of interdependent on each other. So how, do, how does that play into uh, getting your loans closed, right, with less hassle and getting them closed quick? How, how does that tie into it? Well, turn times absolutely relate to a better experience for your borrower. And so a lender that, you know, had countless promises of, of how quick and easy their system is, um, <laughs> show us. Right, absolutely. Right. <laughs> the end of the day. Yeah. So, so, Kit, obviously, you know, you, you mentioned Steve, your account executive before, um, and I, I, you know, I, I asked you, if Steve went somewhere else to another company, you'd follow him, wouldn't you? Bye, Carl. Right, absolutely. <laughs> right. Although you do love us, correct? That, that, yeah. it, of course I'm being facetious. You know, um, Steve is, an, uh, you know, is my secret weapon. Um, you know, and, it's, it, and that's not just with Remit Wholesale, but it's any account executive, any, any lender out there. That, that, that's true. There, there need to be more Steve's cloned in, this, you know, in our industry. Um, you know, th there are so many reps who will cut and paste guidelines when you ask a question. Right. And now you're supposed to interpret what you, you already could have looked up. Right. right. I right. could have done that right. myself. I need. How do I make this work? Um, and this, I, you know, not a plug, but it's the truth that Remen. The the reason I value my relationship with you guys is that um, you look for ways to to say yes not for ways to say no. Right. And that's that's the difference between being a successful loan officer and not. We're kind of in the same business. Well, and we? for Remen, mm -hmm. turn times. It's amazing. 24-hour underwriting. And, and we did, by no the way, duplicate Steve. That. She's it's got amazing. Steve and, and he's got Farzad. So we right. kind of, we do duplicate and try and, you know, find some good people as well right. as other lenders do the same, right? right? It's, it's difficult, right, just like it's tough to find a successful loan officer out there because, right, right. there's a lot of struggling people out there. Sure. And, um, and I don't care if you're an account executive for a wholesale company or a loan officer for a broker or banker shop. Um, it takes passion. It takes a lot of hard work. And this is not an eight-hour day or a six-hour day, right. Right? right? right. How many hours do we work a day? Oh. Too many. Too many hours. <laughs> but it, but it's, it's because we love this business, and I, I think it shines through. A lot of passion. Yeah. So, um, you know, if, if there's a successful, you know, viewer out there, you know what, I'm just too busy. I've got so many refinances coming through my door. I just can't handle any more business. What would you say to them? Send them to me. <laughs> <laughs> what would I say to the person who said I'm too busy with refinances? Yeah. Because I meet them all the time. I meet that, that type of person that says, you know what, I, I can't learn anything else right now. When the business when the business slows down, then maybe I'll have some more time. But I, I, in my opinion, it's too late at that point. Right. So yeah. you're too busy to learn how to make more money. I, there's no, you can't fix stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a little blunt. Right. But, but it, that, that's my attitude with that. You know, the, people are receptive or they're not. Um, it, it's like walking into a realtor's office. They're receptive or they're not. It's like talking to a client whose main focus is getting the lowest possible rate. I can't help you. Chris, you have too many clients? You're making too much money? Uh, no. No. <laughs> Never. <laughs> it's not enough as a salesperson. Right. Um, so, uh, I mean, what, what else? Um, you know, bring yourself back to when you first got into the business. Um, and it wasn't too long ago. You got in, right? Not. Right. 10, 15 years ago, right. but a handful of years ago, um, you know, brings back to the time, you know, some of the things that you did. Um, you know, you, you mentioned that you went to real open houses and you, you kind of, you know, did the grind to try and build those relationships. Uh, absolutely. And w when you're new in the business, you know, realtors are not going to give you their best client with 800 credit and, you know, 30% down. You're going to get the loans that they couldn't get close or their favorite lender, you know, has dropped the ball on a, uh, on a referral. So those are the, the things that you start with. Those tended to be my best, my best learning experiences because I was able to get the, the tough transactions closed and my business has pretty much transitioned to those, you know, clients with a better credit, but I do know how to get the tougher ones close. And that's, uh, was huge for me. Okay, but the easy ones too. You, you accept those I'm, too I'm all the time. I'm fine with the easy ones. Uh, so, 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 <laughs> They're afraid of that. Uh, so, um, 
That's good. So, a- Amber, what uh, any suggestions, obviously, for someone that's out there that, you know what, they're, they're looking for more business? Um, is it is it finding additional networking groups, uh, referral networks? Absolutely that. And also, I'm often surprised how many of my close family and fr- well, maybe not close family and friends, but don't know what I do. That's right. Really, like right. you kind of take that for granted. Right. I mean, you it's all over it. Facebook, right. but you know, like, so I think that's important. You know, Kit, you, you think the same way, don't you? Oh, yeah. right. It's so maybe easy being to top keep of yourself mind, a secret, right? You know, being top of mind. Stay, um, stay in touch. Yep. Another big um, silo of business for me is banks. I call on banks and I get them to send me the business they can't do because banks, like us, are in the yes business. And when they have to say no, they're creating a gap in their value proposition, right? So, um, I, and it, particularly I talk to them about renovation mortgages because there's such a call for those. It's such an opportunity to really thrive in that business if you do it well. So, um, right. you know, building that relationship with the network of banks around you. Um, and it has to be a line-based thing. You're not going to get the CEO of your know, local bank to say, call Kit Crown. You're going to get the loan officer who's taking an application and they realize it needs a, a renovation loan. They don't do it. Instead of saying no, they say, call Kit. That kind of reminds me of something, too, is, you know, maybe I would tell that loan officer that was struggling, find your niche and become the absolute best you can be at it. That's I a complete agreement. Um, um, and, you know, we talk about the relationship between the lender and the loan officer. I think that's so key to have that relationship with the account executive. And you actually you made a really funny video. And in that video, it was it was threatening to the account executive. If you can't get my deal done, right, right. I'm going to tell everyone in my office <laughs> not to use you, right? right? And right. this will be your last deal. Right. So we joke about that. Right. So, you know, you don't do that, right? No. no, Thing, no. Things I've heard in my office. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, you know, y- you're right. People right. use that line all the time. Right. So people forget, loan officers forget that um, a wholesale lender and the, the loan officer, you're on the same page. You're on the same team to try and get that loan closed. Right. So h- how do you build that relationship with your account executive to say, you know what, Steve, you know, Farzad, I need you to help me on this loan right. to get this loan clo- right. closed. Right. What I do is, I mean, and how I choose my lenders first is th- from the account executive. I mean, it, the account executive can get back to you and get, get you the answers you need. And I don't need the fastest answer. I need the right answer. Right. And, you know, if I get an email back from my account executive, he says, this is from the underwriter. That's excellent because a lot of times they can guide that specific file to that underwriter. That answer's already been taken care of, so I don't have to worry that down the line we're going to have a problem with that transaction. So that's been the that, that's really helpful. And then of course their ability to have inside people that help them, them. You do get that done because they can make all the promises in the world. If if the if the inside people can't get it done, it doesn't mean anything to me. And so, so, and then, so, then therefore damages my reputation as well. So, and, and sometimes you business. mess up, and sometimes the wholesale lender messes up. But it's really how you react to that and, get, and get it fixed. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and and Amber, you have the similar um, uh, relationship with your account executives, right? Not just with with Remen, but uh, with your account executives. Uh, how important is that to help you get your loans closed quickly? Well. I mean, our loans close quickly just because <laughs> we course. package them so properly. But, but, you know, but, back up. <laughs> but sometimes you need a favor. And so it's really having, and I, I don't want to say in your back pocket, because that relationship, it's symbiotic right. and, and it's earned. You don't just get favors on your files. You get favors because you don't ask for them and you don't oftentimes need them. And, you know, except for with Renan. Oh, because crime. you guys so, are just amazing. You're making me blush. <laughs> so, um, you know, but but seriously, you know, going back uh, to the statement you made about packaging and, and knowing your businesses and processing those loans well, we are supposed to be professionals, right? right? We're supposed to know our guidelines and be able to package loans. And if we don't know how to do that, it's imperative that we learn. I think that. it is so That's important good. that everyone in this industry be able to take a loan from start to finish. Absolutely. That's how I learned it. And that's through a mentor, so that's yeah. through, if you have to, even through your account executive, right? Yeah. I think it's... There's so many resources available. Yeah. So Kit, what would you, how would you respond to that about being able to package a loan properly? I, the only way I got as good as I am is by having processed my own loans for the first two years. 
and if I were a new loan officer starting in the industry, I'd find somebody who would let me process loans for a year, for two years, so they understood what went on under the hood. I did a YouTube video called Why It's So Darn Hard to Get a Mortgage. Um, and the, the, the premise of it is not only that if the, these, uh, you know, Fannie and Freddie and VA and FHA and USDA all have rule books, but that underwriters don't wake up in the morning and say, hmm, how do I pick on Amber today? Right. They, they are working with a checklist. And, you know, so I'm a guy. I had a hard time overcoming the um, argue with the underwriter syndrome, um, mm -hmm. the, the, <laughs> there's no common sense in That's our right. industry right. syndrome. Um, but once I got past that and realized, hey, they're my partners. They're, when they ask for something, they're not saying, you know, geez, I wonder if we can tweak Kit a little bit today. Sure. They're asking because Fannie's asking for it, That's right. Right. because FHA is asking for it. And so don't argue with them. Go fix the problem. Go get it. Find a solution. Think outside of the box. Right. That's so true. Involve yourself with as many loan opportunities, opportunities and scenarios as you can, because you're not. It's not. It's one of those hands-on things. You actually have to go through the motions. And, and it's funny that, you know, uh, to bring up the fact that uh, you mentioned to me that you win all the time on appraisals, right, when there's issues with value? Oh, disputes. Because, right, you you have someone in, and you yourself are very right. versed in appraisals. So you well, know me, not so much. But, yeah, <laughs> we have a staffer that's amazing at it. That's cool. So I, I have the monitor in front of me right now, and there's a whole lot of questions coming in for all of us today. Um, and I'm going to continue to ask all of you to keep sending those questions because we are live and we have a limited amount, amount of time. Um, anyone who's registered for this live webinar, we're going to get these questions and answers out to you afterwards, okay? So keep sending those questions in. I I'd would like to kind of get into the, the marketing piece and the branding uh, because uh, you've, the three of you have done a phenomenal job to get to where you are today. So now how do we get to that next level? Is it building additional ref referral sources? Is it maybe building another website? Um, you know, Chris, how do we get to the next level? Uh, for me, it's becoming more efficient. Uh, our company, we have an amazing processing staff, so I am able to close my loans timely, which tends to bring me more business. I need to free up my time, and I have an unbelievable assistant that uh, has helped me, um, you know, uh, I, in well, it, following it, my emails and, and uh, flagging things for me to follow up on uh, and just taking over tasks that, that, you know, I'm better used doing something else. Yeah, and, and the support. I mean, you, you I'm not going to use the word glow, but you, I mean, you always have a smile that comes to your right. face when you talk about your assistant because right. that person is so important to your business. Right. Yeah. And, and Amber, um, you know, that's what you do, right? Yep. You're, go ahead. And I, Well, I think I like what you said because streamlined processes are, can make or break you. Really, it, there's so much busy work. I hate to say it, but it's paperwork. Right. That's what we do. Right. And there's so many pieces to the puzzle. So developing a system and having streamlined processes every single time right. yeah. really help you through. Yeah. And, and Kit? I mean, it's so true. You know, the, all we have is ourselves to sell. All we have is right. our time to give. And if, we're, if we follow the rat down the hole and do the, the menial stuff, I don't mean menial, I mean... The, the stuff that doesn't produce more revenue, then we're um, not operating at our mo uh, best efficiency. I haven't solved that yet, so you know I feel uh, like that is my that's that's the cross I need to the, the change I need to make in my and own practice. I so agree with you because I actually see through from start to finish every single deal. That's right. Now the reason and you're if successful, I could break yeah. It's and because I'm it's, good. It's, it's because you see it through from start to finish. And right. the clients know they can count on you to deliver. For and sure. And so letting that go and not ma maintaining that kind of obsessive control over outcomes, it feels <laughs> like you're falling short of, of, of the brand that you set for yourself. And that, that's the way it feels to me. So. Right. And I liked what someone said the other day about uh, I provide a white glove service. I love that. Right. You have to. You, you have really to defend do. yourself. Um, so I, I have a selfish statement, selfish comment as a lender, and that is um, we have um, our, pro, uh, our broker partners ask us all the time, can you do this for me? Can you do that? It would make my life so much easier. And one of the things that uh, was brought to, uh, up to us uh, by several of our customers was that we need some additional marketing material. So we created what's called Flyer Paradise, and it's on our website. But you know, are there other things that, that you believe that maybe a partner, a lending partner, can do for you 
because it is a partnership and maybe it's just support. I, I don't know. I'm just going to throw that out to you. Yeah, for me, the biggest thing is support. Uh, obviously, the marketing materials are great. I mean, they, you can co-brand it. Uh, they're easy to, you know, to modify and use. And it's just something else to put your name out there and, and promote what you do uh, in this business. Yeah. And also educate your borrower. What right you about the range of things that we do. Well, um, maybe about the process so, so that they know what to expect. You know, a lot yeah. of people going into it, first-time homebuyers, it's a daunting experience, or can be. I completely agree with you because if, if a customer knows what kind of the, the flow of what they can expect during the process, I think they can, um, they'll expect you to make, maybe call them up and say, look, I need another, you know, bank statement or something like that. Well, there's like so that. many horror stories out there, right. too. Right, and I think that goes in line with the knowledge, right, and being able to package files. And I, I, I don't think we can tell the viewers enough how important it is to make sure that we're packaging our files properly. Sure. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. And, and all, actually, all the horror stories uh, help build our brands when you can create a different experience. And they've heard from their friends or family what a terrible experience it was, and their experience was amazing. Uh, that just, it just brings you referrals instantly. That's great. And we're all marketing all the time. Yeah. We either negatively or positively. Right. That's right. Preferably positively. Yeah. Right. Preferably. Yeah. And, and Remen helps us do that, you know, by, if, by delivering on the outcomes. A, again, I don't want to be a shill for Remen, but that's, an, that's an, a critical component of what I consider to be not a vendor relationship, but a partnership. Right. Yeah. And there's many par partners out there that do that, but I appreciate the plug. Thank right. you. Appreciate sure. that. Okay. So, um, you know, having said that, uh, we've spent a lot of time explaining to the viewers today, both have just recently gotten to the business and some suggestions, and hopefully you've learned uh, some maybe um, some bits and pieces that maybe make you better and more productive in, in, your, in your business. But I appreciate all of your time today and uh, look forward to the next time we meet. But thank you very much. Appreciate okay. it. Right. Thank you. Thank you.